Hi, I'm the Reverend Jonathan Hunt, known by many as Joth, and I'm a regional minister for the Southern Counties Baptist Association. In fact, I'm your regional minister for Frimley Baptist Church. Uh, and I want to thank Glyn for this opportunity and invitation to just share with you on your church anniversary. I have brought you down here to a special spot to particularly introduce you to a good friend of mine uh, called the Itchen River. I've been coming down to the Itchen River and running along the Itchen River and doing some walks along the Itchen River uh, over the last few months and weeks and it's become, an, become a really precious and special place for me. So I thought that you know, during the easing of lockdown uh, it'd be nice to get out and about and to share some of my favourite spots with you. Uh, in fact, actually on Saturday the 30th of May, a friend of mine, Declan, and I decided that we would actually walk the whole of the Itchin River. It's called the Itchin Navigation or the Itchin Way. And we started back in uh, Southampton at the Itchin Bridge and we made our way north uh, through Riverside where we are at this point in time uh, onto Eastley and then Bishopstoke and onto Winchester and then we bear east and we followed the river all the way to the source which is found in a place called New, New, uh, New Cheriton. Uh, it's a beautiful walk and it's a beautiful river to, to follow. We were pretty exhausted by the end of it. Yeah, it took us about 12 hours and it, it was about 30 miles that we walked on that day in total. Do you know, walking along a river or, walk, or doing any walk uh, means that you have to leave the past behind and step into the present and move on into the future. And coming down here and doing some running but also doing some walking uh, is, is been an opportunity for me to reflect on my own Christian life but also the life of the church. For many of us we sense that in this moment of coronavirus we're at a bit of a crossway in life, in our Christian journey as church particularly. If you're going to finish a walk, if you're going to start at the beginning and finish at the end, you need to step out of the past, you need to step into the present and then on into the future and you have to keep doing that. You know, the past it has to be left behind and you have to keep going. Which reminds me of the passage in Hebrews, Hebrews 13, and that precious verse, verse 8, where the writer says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and for, forever. And the writer is trying to encourage his readers to say to them that Jesus is with us all the time. He's been with us in the past, he's with us in the present, and he will continue to be with us in the future. He is our Lord for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I want to read to you uh, the passage again, but this time I just want to take the version that is the translation given by Tom Wright in his little book about Hebrews. Tom Wright translates that passage in Hebrews 13 like this. Let the family continue to care for one another. Don't forget to be hospitable. By that means, some people have entertained angels without even realising it. Remember people in prison as though you were in prison with them. When you think of people who are having a difficult time, remember that you too live in a frail body. Let marriage be honoured by everyone. Let the marriage bed be, remain undefiled. God will judge those who sleep around or commit adultery. Keep your life free from love of money. Be content with whatever you have. He himself has said, after all, I will never ever leave you or forsake you. That's why we can be cheerfully confident and say, the Lord is helping me. I'm not going to be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke God's word to you. Look carefully at how their lives came to complete fruition and imitate their faith. Jesus the Messiah is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let me take a few moments just to unpack some of that passage for you. But as we do so, 
let me take you to one or two of the other places that are, are my favourite spots along this Itchin River, this Itchin Way. So here we are further up the river, we're just north of Banbridge, uh, just south of Shawford, about nine miles up from the Itchin Bridge. Do you know, to get to the present, we always must walk through the past. I have found there are two misguided views of the past. You get the, uh, the view that the past is over-glorified, it's over-romanticised. People look back and say, oh, it's so much better back in the past. And then you get that other view which almost rejects the past. It says there's nothing worth remembering of the past. And, and it, it tends to ignore the journey that's gone before. When I, uh, when I go for a walk quite often, and I guess you do too, I quite often will take pictures. And then later, a day or two, or maybe even months later, I'll look back on that journey that I've been on and remind myself of the occasion, the joy of it, those moments, those special, beautiful spots that I particularly wanted to captivate and keep. But it doesn't mean that I need to remain in the past. The past is something that belongs to Jesus, that is part of him. The Hebrew writer says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And of course, the past is his. And there's so much for us to learn from the past. But we need to step forward from the past into the present. The river is the same river. Wherever you are on this Itchin River, it is the Itchin River, whether you're at the source of the river or whether you're down at the base of the river, at the Itchin Bridge, it's the same river. And actually, it's the same, same bit of water that will travel that whole river. But the scene around the river changes. And we, as people, as we travel through history and we move into the unknown, need to recognise that the scene will change as we move forward. It's not that we reject the past, we celebrate the past, we give thanks to the past, we learn from the past, but we also step in to the future, into the present and then on into the future. Do you know, church anniversaries and AGMs actually are great times for us to look back, to remember, to get the old photo album out and to, to look at what happened and to give thanks and to celebrate the good things that God has done. And that's so important that we do that. So the writer of, this, of the Hebrews here in Hebrews 13 named a whole number of things that are important from the past that we need to remember and that we need to keep hold of. He says, keep on loving one another. He says, do not forget to show hospitality. He says, continue to remember those in prison, those who are ill-treated. He reminds them that marriage is to be honoured. He, he encourages them to keep their lives free from the love of money, to keep doing that, uh, to grow in contentment in God and to become confident. These are all things that they have learnt and grown in in the past. And these are things not to be left behind. It's almost as if there's things in the past that we need to grab hold of, pick up and continue. Just as Jesus was the same yesterday, today and forever, so must be the church's love, so must be the church's hospitality, so must be the church's care, so must be the church's commitment to each other and faithfulness to each other, so must be the church's confidence in God. Those are things of the past that he celebrates and he particularly celebrates them in the heroes of faith in, in Hebrews chapter 12. These things we carry on from the past into the present. But we have to step out of the past into this moment, the present moment. So let's get going, because we've got a long way to go. So welcome to Compton Lock. This is one of my favorite spots, but it's also a favorite spot of many others. In fact, at, at a weekend, a hot weekend, this place will be heaving. Now, kids will be in the water, people will be having picnics. It's a, it's a busy place. 
in Hebrews 1 sorry Hebrews 13 verse 8 the writer says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever I quite often wonder whether we as Christians uh, emphasize the yesterday and the forever and often forget the moment of today we're interested in what God has done of course we are and that's really really important and we're absolutely fascinated with what God is going to do but what is God doing now Jesus Christ is in the present in the moment when I did my walk with Declan uh, we, we stopped here and rested for a while and uh, there was a scene where a young lad was in the water and he was having a great time in fact actually I, I put my feet in the water for a while and it was freezing cold and he got into the water once he got used to the temperature he was having a great time and his dad was on the side of the river and he's beckoning his dad in he's calling his dad to come and enjoy the moment he was in the moment if I had have stopped him at that moment and said hey friend what, what did you do yesterday and what are you going to do tomorrow I think he would have been quite confused he was so immersed in the moment that he was just enjoying it having fun and particularly wanted his dad his loved one to enjoy that moment too we we mustn't miss the moment however much we might want to reminisce about the past and however much we're keen to know what the future has before us it is today that we find ourselves in the present I'm interested in the word present you know, that this is the present moment we are present within it but also God is present with us and it is in this moment that God wants to do his greatest work I think the writer of the Hebrews knows that the the early Christians that received that that epistle that that letter for the very first time were in a, a difficult moment and to be reminded that Jesus was with them was absolutely crucial stop for a moment what moment are you in at this point in time and that and how are you recognizing and noticing what God is doing in your life and whether it be a moment of difficulty a moment of suffering a moment of hardship or maybe it's a moment of celebration and rejoicing and joy whatever it is recognize the moment and remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever let's move further on and make our way up towards Winchester this is Hockley Viaduct just south of Winchester in fact it's one of the few points where you can get above the Itchen River and see further ahead we live in strange times don't we words like zoom and furlough and phrases like I cannot hear you and uh, what will be the new normal have come to the forefront of our vocabulary in recent times the world it seems is pivoting and we're unsure about what tomorrow and what the future might bring Sue and I uh, recently yesterday actually last night were watching the film Peter Rabbit and uh, in Peter Rabbit there's this wonderful character the cockerel and the cockerel wakes each morning with great surprise that there is a morning I know and no one told me that this was going to happen that the Sun was going to rise again and he's so excited about the new day Do you know we shouldn't be surprised that there will be a tomorrow we can almost be guaranteed that we will move from today into tomorrow but we can take two extreme positions when we think about the future we can take the position which I often fall into where I get over excited about the future and I over plan I over prepare I overthink and there is a danger that we can do that so much that actually we forget about the moment of today but the other position is that we can become over fearful of the future the future looks uncertain and we become afraid of what might be before us the writer of the Hebrews understands that those first readers would have been afraid of the future there were good and real reasons why that would have been the case 
And he continually wants to, all the way through this epistle, to encourage them that the Lord Jesus, who is the Lord of yesterday, is the Lord of today and will be the Lord of tomorrow. He does that in chapter 1, he does that in chapter 10 particularly, where he encourages them to persevere in their faith. He says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as we see that day approaching. He wants to encourage them to step forward. They don't know what the future will bring. Do you know, the, uh, the film Back to the Future was just a fictitious story. No one has been to the future. No one can come and tell us what is ahead of us. But what we can be certain of is that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And our confidence is not so much in what will happen, but in who we travel with. So let's get going and see if we can get slightly further up the river. So I brought you to this last little favourite spot of mine. We're just east of Winchester in a little place called Overton Village. And just across this bridge is a lovely little pub called The Bush Inn. Uh, we arrived at this place and rested on, on our walk, but by the time we got here, in fact actually there's another five miles to go before you get to the source of the river in Cheriton. And uh, when we arrived here, I was beginning to feel quite exhausted. I had blisters on my feet, uh, my legs were beginning to seize up, I was beginning to struggle. In fact, actually the last five miles were really the toughest. When the writer of the Hebrews wrote that book, he suspected that the years ahead, the, the years that were ahead of this, this group of people that were reading it for the first time were going to be the toughest. But often the toughest part is the last part of a journey. In fact, actually for some of them, it was going to mean death for their faith. And so he wanted to encourage them right from the beginning of his, his letter to the end that God is with them, that Jesus remains to be Lord all the way through it. Through the good and through the bad, through the difficult, through the tough times, he remains to be the Lord. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. When I arrived at the end of my walk, I was absolutely delighted to see my wife. In fact, I'm always delighted to see my wife, but on this occasion I was particularly delighted to see her. She had arrived with the car. She said I looked like an old man walking up the street and I was really hobbling by that point. But to see her face to face was such a joy. And that's the promise that we have. That's the promise of the right of the Hebrews. That's the promise of the Bible. Is that as we walk into the future, as we move with Jesus, as we are reminded that he is the Lord of the past, the present and the future. And that he will always be with us. That one day we will be filled with joy as we see him face to face. I wanted to finish this time by just sharing a little benediction written by the writer of the Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.